Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out of My League. I'm Nick Diaz. SEC schedules are out for the 2021 football season, and here is LSU's real quick. In September, they're at UCLA, home against McNeese, home against Central Michigan, at Mississippi State. In October, they're home against Auburn, at Kentucky, home against Florida, at Ole Miss, by during Halloween week. November, they're at Bama, and they finish with three straight home games, Arkansas, UL Monroe, and Texas A&M. Now, a lot of you are going to wonder, what am I going to predict LSU records record to be in 2021? I have no idea. I, I mean, I don't even know where to start to predict, predict what their record's going to be. Yes, LSU is returning 20 of 22 starters. That's important. But I don't know. I don't know who LSU's quarterback is going to be. I don't even know how good the new staff is going to be or how good the new coordinators are. I have a calculated hunch that they're going to be better than last year, but I don't know for certain. But what I will do is I'm going to go right now, I'm going to go game by game and tell you which coordinator needs to be good in order for LSU to win that game. Don't need both, necessarily, but which coordinator needs to be a great hire, needs to work, in order for you to win that game. So, let's start with UCLA. You're at UCLA. You're playing a Chip Kelly team. They're known for offense. So, obvious, Durante Jones needs to be a good hire if you want to win this game. UCLA's defense gives up a lot of points, and even if Pete's and Mangus aren't great hires... You can still score points because LSU has just so much talent on the perimeter more than UCLA does. So, Durante Jones needs to be great for you to beat UCLA. McNeese and Central Michigan, you should win. We'll go through the rent wins but LSU is going to win those. At Mississippi State, most of you are probably thinking, I'll say defense, right? Nope. I know LSU gave up like a 1,000 yards passing, but I'm going to say this. Durante Jones doesn't have to be a great hire to win this game because Bo Pelini's game plan against Mississippi State was so bad, so incompetent, so illogical. There's no way you give up that many yards to a terrible state offense. Any competent defensive coordinator can see how you play a Mike Leach offense. If you want to win this game, Pete's and Mangus have to be good hires because remember, Mississippi State had a top five defense last year And they have a great defensive coordinator, Zach Arnett, who's coming back again this year. So, if you want to win at Mississippi State, Pete's and Mangus, they have to do their job. Uh, Home against Auburn. LSU will be the more talented team this year, in my opinion, because of the turnover going on at Auburn, transitioning to a new staff. But if you remember, last year's game, LSU was holding their own on defense. They were. But... The reason why Auburn got away from them is because LSU quit. The body language was bad. That's when on the sidelines, LSU was was laughing when they were getting blown out. They just didn't care. And it all happened after Finley fumbled. It was a strip sack fumble, and Auburn returned it for a touchdown. Then LSU just gave up. LSU can never get in a rhythm on offense, ever. Defense showed flashes. So Pete's and Mangus, Auburn still got dudes on defense. Pete's and Mangus are going to have to work to win this game. At Kentucky, Kentucky, look. Kentucky has been horrible and one-dimensional on on offense, and they have no quarterback. They had no quarterback for years. Now, Kentucky does have a new offensive coordinator that came from the Rams. I don't even know how good it's going to be, but I imagine it's going to be more creative. But it's still a transitional year for Kentucky because they were supposed to be really great last year, and they're losing a lot of great players for this year. So they're in a rebuilding mode. But Kentucky always has salty players on defense. They send defensive guys to the NFL constantly. So, Pete's and Mangus, they're going to have to do their job to win this game. But I expect LSU to come out of a win uh, with Kentucky if Pete's and Mangus are any good. Florida at home. Look, LSU won this game miraculously last year. So, I I don't see Florida's defense getting any better. I just don't. They're returning their defensive coordinator. Their recruiting hasn't really improved all that much. So I see Florida's defense kind of being similar to what they were. So if you put up points with a first-time starting true freshman quarterback on the road last year in Max Johnson, you should be able to do that same thing at home with a more experienced offense. Dan Mullen, however, scares the 
hell out of me as a play caller. Maybe even more than Lane Kiffin, to be honest with you. And Durante Jones, look, he's going to have to be a great hire if LSU is going to beat Florida at home this time around because Florida's going to want revenge at Ole Miss afterwards. Look, after what we saw last year, it's obvious. You're playing Lane Kiffin. You're going to have to make some stops. You're going to have to make more stops because LSU made some great stops in the first half uh, last year, and they still (laughs) almost lost the game. So Durante Jones is going to have to earn his money two weeks in a row, getting Mullen and Kiffin back-to-back. So Durante Jones is going to be great to beat Florida and Ole Miss in back-to-back games. Get a bye week. Then, of course, at Alabama. Now, y'all are familiar with the phrase complimentary football, right? In other words, it's not just about the offense calling plays to score. They're calling plays to win in situational football or the defense making stops. It's about situational awareness, situational football. You hear Bill Belichick talk about it all the time. This is one of those games where both coordinators are going to have to be in uh, synergy. They're going to have to be in synergy. Pete and Jones are going to have to, to have to devise a game plan that works for each other if you're going to beat Alabama. Both coordinators have to be great. You're going to go on the road in Tuscaloosa. Home against Arkansas. Arkansas made LSU a little uncomfortable on defense without any of their starters on the defensive line and even some of their linebackers. They had some walk-ons on Arkansas's defense, and they were still able to make LSU uncomfortable. So really, LSU loses to Arkansas last year if the D doesn't have, if Arkansas's defense doesn't have any COVID problems. I, I firmly believe that. Now look, in today's football, points are just kind of, going to happen. Kendall Bryles, the offensive coordinator for Arkansas, is going to get his points eventually. So Pete and Mangus are going to have to go toe-to-toe with Arkansas defensive coordinator Barry Odom to get home, coming off of probably a hangover game, win or lose, against Alabama. They want to beat Arkansas. UL Monroe, after that, you win that one. Last game at home against Texas A&M. This one should be pretty clear. LSU had their best defensive performance all last season against the Aggies. Texas A&M is not an explosive offense. They're just not. They're not explosive in the passing game. They're ground and pound, beats you with defense. Very old school. So even if A&M scores more than 20 points, it wouldn't take much for Jones to try to even duplicate what Bo Pelini did last year. So last game of the regular season, it falls on Pete and Mangus to go toe-to-toe with uh, the d- defensive coordinator for AM. So, to recap, all the nine games, not the Rena wins, we don't care about those. All the nine games that we broke down, only three of those games do you need Durante Jones to be a great hire if you want to win. And five of those games, you need Pete's and Mangus to be great hires to work. And one against Alabama, you need both of those hires to work. At the same time. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter at the Nick Diaz.